Virtual schools became a mandatory part of local authority provision from around about 2014 on, on the back of a successful pilot project. I believe it's such an important role within every local authority. There's still a lot of misconception around what a virtual school does, its function, its staffing structure. If you stop somebody in, in the street and say, I work for a virtual school, they'll immediately say, oh, so do you teach online then? There is a lot more to obviously a virtual school than that because we don't actually teach online. So what I aim to do is, is just take you on a little bit of a journey of what a virtual school does and its kind of statutory function. In its simplest term, a virtual school is there to monitor children in care's attendance, attainment and achievement and ensure that education is top priority in their care planning. So what does a virtual school do? A virtual school champions the education of children in care. We are the corporate parent for these children. We distribute Pupil Premium Plus money to schools on the caveat that their personalised education plan is of good standard and that targets are set to really raise the attainment of and, and progress of children in care. We recognise that children coming into care are nine times out of ten behind their peers in their learning and need additional support. We also promote the education offer around the new into care process. We support school applications to secure outstanding or good education provision for our children that we support and my strap line to that is if it's not good enough for my child then then why are we placing a, a child in in that provision we source bespoke alternative provisions where required that might be therapeutic interventions the use of a therapeutic farm something to engage and keep the young person within the education cycle we support key points of transition we, we support placement breakdowns when, when children move from one local authority to another local authority. We commission specialised services such as speech and language therapy, educational psychologists, occupational therapists. We attend child looked after reviews and champion the language of education. We train our social care colleagues and develop their CPD understanding of education. You know, what is good attendance? What is an EHCP? One of our biggest partners with our work is Children's Social Care. Within Rutland County Council, the virtual school currently sits within education. Structures of virtual schools look different nationally. We have a head of virtual school with a deputy, with teaching staff, with mentors. At Rutland, for me, it's about adding capacity to the structure that we have. We provide a lot of training to designated teachers, so a designated teacher is our key point of contact within any education setting. A designated teacher is usually somebody within a senior leadership structure that has the overarching strategic view to ensure that children looked after's education is supported within their school. So a designated teacher is our point of contact. We run designated teacher networks where we equip them with expertise, knowledge and skills to develop their further understanding to, to better support children with a social worker. We deliver training for foster carers. We also provide advice, support and guidance for previously looked after children and their families. At Rutland County Council Virtual School, we also have commissioned in expertise from the following. We've commissioned expertise from educational psychologists. We've commissioned expertise from Leicester City Football Club in the community. And we've commissioned expertise from the Mighty Creatives. The expertise provided from our educational psychology service provides training to foster carers, training to schools, but they also casework some of our children in care, providing assessments and intervention as and when required. The expertise provided by Leicester City Football Club in the community comes in the form of mentoring through Foster the Future, enrichment opportunities, in particular match days, residential opportunities, the expertise provided from the Mighty Creatives fundamentally is around creative mentoring, where the creative mentor sits alongside a young person and develop and nurture and foster their individual creative talents. Can you explain how Rutland Virtual School monitor the attendance and achievement of children in care? Rutland County Council Virtual School commission a service called Welfare Call Welfare Call are an organisation based in Barnsley. They do our first day calling 
um, to ensure that all of our children looked after are in education. So Welfare Call will ring the school and then if the child isn't in school immediately, they'll notify the social worker. What is a PEP? So within a virtual school world, you will hear the word PEP. So what does PEP stand for? PEP is Personalised Education Plan. Every child that is in the care of a local authority will have a PEP, Personalised Education Plan. A virtual school has PEP meetings, Personalised Education Plan meetings, a minimum of once a term to check the progress of the child in care and how they're getting on within the setting. So let's break it down a little bit. So a PEP has to have a social worker present, otherwise we cannot call it a PEP meeting. So it's part of the care planning proceedings for that child in care. And usually it's attended by the designated teacher from the school and any other agencies that are involved with that child. So within a PEP meeting, we will discuss what's working well for that child, areas of concern and worry that we need to focus on, and what needs to be in place to move the plan forward. Within a PEP, we will discuss strength difficulties for the child, so there'll be an SDQ form completed, a strength difficulties questionnaire. There's an all about me section for the child. There's an education section, and this gives an opportunity for a school to comment on areas of development for that child, but also gives a school opportunity to discuss how that child may be presenting. You know, are there any uh, emotional well-being concerns? Are there any underlying SEMH um, concerns? So social, emotional, mental health concerns. How does that child present on a daily basis? Does that child need additional support? Does that child attend? You know, how, how is their attendance looking? How's their behaviour looking? So in the education section, it really allows the designated teacher to give an account of what's happening. Part of the PEP, we will discuss the child's attainment. Within the attainment section itself, we will set clear targets linked to their attainment gaps. Part of the PEP will also allow for the foster carer voice. So that's a really important part of the PEP. So the foster care will have an opportunity to give their views of how placement is, how, you know, what things are working well, what things they probably need to implement within placement that education are doing and vice versa. Within the PEP also we have a careers and information section. So this is where we support the child with their career development pathway. A fundamental priority part of the PEP will be to seek the views of the young person. The young person should be at their PEP, it is their educational meeting. Where the young person is confident to, they chair their own PEP. If they cannot attend, then views of the child need to be captured and brought to the table to discuss. What is Pupil Premium Plus? Unlike the Pupil Premium Grant for disadvantaged children, which aims to reduce the attainment gap caused by economic disadvantage, Pupil Premium Plus is awarded in recognition that many adopted and permanently placed children need extra support in school because of the circumstances that lead to them being placed into care. Pupil Premium Plus is an additional educational funding given to schools or virtual schools for children who are looked after or in care. Pupil Premium Plus is the responsibility of a virtual school to discharge to schools to help support the narrowing of the attainment gap. All virtual schools should have in place a Pupil Premium Plus policy. This is fundamentally the guidance to support the virtual school to distribute the funding. Within the virtual school Pupil Premium Plus policy, it will give clear examples to schools on how money can be spent. Some examples of how that money can be spent could be on extra tutoring, extra tuition, electronic devices to support that child's learning, or it could be that the child needs therapeutic intervention and support, and for that instance, we may commission Theraplay or play therapy. Pupil Premium Plus may also fund alternative provisions where the child needs additional support away from the mainstream school environment. As a designated teacher at a Rutland school, can you explain how the virtual school supports you? 
so it supports me in many many ways and I just wanted to start actually by saying that the support I've received has been exceptional and it has a real benefit for the uh, young person in my school who's looked after um, so there are different areas of support I'd say firstly um, within my role as designated teacher I've received some really high quality professional development it felt really inspirational it was enabling me to go back to school and think actually this is what we need to do or this is how you know it can have an impact on my practice in addition to that we've had the educational uh, psychologists the, the service within Rutland for the actual children who are looked after and that has been invaluable because having conversations uh, and the educational psychologist coming in to make observations of the children, then being able to talk to the teacher and myself as designated teacher uh, around strategies which are going to uh, support that young person. That has been really, really beneficial to our practice. Um, we always knew that they were only a phone call away as well, which was really, really helpful. I've also had various professional dialogue with the virtual head, so whenever I've needed some advice, I just feel like together, you know, we're part of one big team that are trying to champion this young person. And so having that opportunity just to drop an email or a quick phone call and have some advice given to me um, has been really, really beneficial. Um, in addition to that, we have our termly PEP meetings and they have been conducted either virtually or where possible in person. And it, it's really an opportunity where we're looking at sort of various aspects of the, the child's uh, educational provision, but also ensuring that we're capturing their voice, being sort of connected through conversations with both the carers and other people that work around that child. And as part of that meeting, we then look at the Pupil Premium Plus funding, which is really centered on the child in terms of what they need, whether it's resources, whether it's enriching opportunities, particularly sort of targeted around any additional intervention that they might need. And the Pupil Premium Plus funding um, has been used to really, really benefit the child and make a big difference to them. Can you explain the role of a social worker when working with Rutland Virtual School? Social workers in Rutland make sure they stay in communication with the virtual school so that they can work closely together so that all children looked after are supported not only in their homes but also in their education settings. It's really important for the social workers to ensure they are discussing education in key meetings that they hold and ensure all partner agencies are included in these meetings. These key agencies can include the police, health professionals and colleagues from inclusion, SEND and even housing. Social workers will regularly discuss with key professionals how that child is getting on in their education setting, how their attendance is, are they struggling, are there any barriers that are stopping them from accessing their education. The virtual school and children's social care will make sure they create robust and thorough plans for the children and young people so they feel more supported in accessing education that is right for them. A key role of the social worker is to make sure that they work in close partnership with the virtual school and foster carers during any placement moves for children looked after. This is such an important and sometimes scary time for the child and young person. The virtual school and the social workers need to ensure that these moves do not impact the child's education too much. Sometimes the move could mean a new education setting for that child or young person and that would mean that the social worker has to help the virtual school sometimes apply for new school places. As the Head of Children's Social Care, can you explain how Rutland Virtual School supports social workers and other members of your team? The Virtual School is a really supportive team and resource for children and young people and for social workers in Rutland. They offer expert advice and guidance to social workers, PAs and social work assistants around supporting young people in their education. They always look at creative ways to engage young people in education and support young people to reach their full potential. They offer training and support and guidance. They've run various events that help raise people's awareness about different options and services available to children and young people. 
They really help people to understand their education entitlements and advocate for children and young people to make sure that they have the right education provision and they help social workers to build their confidence in being able to advocate that for our young people too. They're a really valuable resource in terms of consultation and helping us find the right plans so that our children and young people really achieve well within Rutland. And we see that in terms of our education, employment and training figures, especially for our care leavers, which are really high compared to others nationally. And I think that our virtual school play a real key role in that. What is the role of an educational psychologist? Educational psychologists are professionals who bring their knowledge of psychology um, to support the learning, education, development and emotional well-being of young people in whatever their educational setting may be. We work at different levels, so we work at the level of the whole staff in an educational setting. So we may do training with them, we may think of, of solutions to different problems a, a school may have, for example at lunch times. We may train them in a particular area that they want to learn about. We work with individual teachers who may have an issue with uh, their class. They may have a concern about a child in their class. And we work with individual children, young people and their families to help solve any problems that they're facing. All of these, we try to bring our knowledge of psychology, of research around development, and bring that to problem solving with the experts in the educational setting and the experts in the families. How, as an educational psychologist, do you work with Rutland Virtual School? The educational psychologists work with the virtual school. Basically, our aim is to help the school, help the children get the best out of their education. So we, we might do a lot of different things. We might work directly with children, assessing the children, so that we can help the people working with them, their teachers or early years practitioners, to understand their needs. Or we might work directly with the children in order to help them with a tricky time in their life, maybe a transition between schools. Or we might collaborate with staff, thinking carefully with staff about what they understand of a situation and helping them make sense of what the children they're working with are presenting to them. Very often, looked after children have a, a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety they're dealing with, but it doesn't always look like that. They can hide it quite well. And some of our work is working with teachers, other adults in school, to help them see and understand that the, the, some of the externalising behaviours may well be the children communicating their anxiety and their fear. Because we're um, commissioned directly by Rutland Virtual School, educational psychologists can be flexible in their response. And rather than looked after children having to wait for a long time to, to have an educational psychologist involved in working with their teacher or assessing them, we can be more flexible than that. We can respond to the need more as it arises. Another thing that educational psychologists do working with the virtual school are working with the people around looked after children. So some of that time, that means working with the designated teachers for looked after children in the schools, and we provide training for those teachers. They are the consultants in the school for all the other teachers to go to when they're working with a looked after child. And, and they need support and they need good training, and we're part of that. So we might train them, on, most recently we've trained them on emotional regulation, but we might offer them a range of training to give them the skills they need to support their staff. Sometimes we offer training to those people closest to looked after children, so the team around them in a school. So that might be their form tutor or their class teacher. That might be the mentor working with them, and it might be a senior member of staff. And we might work with just that small team and train them up to give them the skills to really support a child who's experienced trauma and who is therefore maybe easily triggered or maybe fearful of rejection and externalising their behaviours in ways that's, that can be really challenging to manage. And a lot of staff find they need support because it can be hard work. It can be emotionally challenging doing that. And we try to, part, to offer that support at the same time as offering them training. And sometimes we offer a little bit of therapeutic input that schools may be able to use. For example, some schools can use a TheraPlay approach 
in building their relationships with looked after children, a playful approach which can be really effective. In your role as a foster carer, can you tell me about the support that a virtual school provides to you? The virtual school, the, the support it supplies to us as our role as foster carers is, um, well, I don't know really at the point now what we'd do without it. We get educational support. The virtual school attends meetings with us, which, to be honest, is, is, is a great, great help. Endless, endless opportunities. Also, we get support in Pepsi, which is extremely helpful. We also get an education psychologist, things like activities like the Mighty Creatives, stuff to do with Leicester City Football Club, which is absolutely amazing. One of the children has opportunities to go skiing, which was a intense course for 12 weeks at uh, Tamworth Ski Centre. And then they had a week away in Italy. He found that absolutely amazing. He, I watched it, it was a pleasure to watch him grow as a person with all that, mixing with other kids from other different backgrounds. Um, the children had the chance to go to the Outdoor Pursuit Centre. Just countless, countless opportunities that we are extremely grateful for that enhances our ability to do our job, for want of another word. The virtual school has helped with the education of the children in our care in so many ways. They've had holidays, skiing abroad, Leicester City in the community, they've done all sorts of activities, Mighty Creatives, which is an ongoing thing. One of them has gone to the private school in Oakham, which he is achieving so much there, and this is an unbe unbelievable opportunity for him. The oldest one, he has an opportunity to now have an apprenticeship with Leicester City Football Club. And they're just generally really doing very, very well. The list is endless with the support that we've been given for the children. As a foster carer, could you tell me how you feel Rutland Virtual School supports you? Well, I think as foster carers, we get supported in many different ways from the virtual school. And as a foster carer that's been caring now for children at Rutland for over 10 years, we've used the service for at least eight or nine of the placements that we've had. And I think in all those placements, we found that the virtual school has probably given us the most help for us and I think for Rutland, the most important part of caring for uh, for young people is getting the education right. We're able to get extra help from the school. We're able to get more support from the head. The availability of having an educational psychologist attached to Rutland and um, at the assistance of the virtual school is obviously something that really helps us. And I think also helping us to identify the best school placement, because sometimes the young people that are staying with us might not necessarily be living directly opposite the school that they might have gone to prior to moving away from mum and dad or from a carer. And um, finding the right school placement, be it private or um, in the state system, I think is absolutely vital. And the uh, virtual school does that for us. As a foster carer, can you tell us how Rutland Virtual School supports you? Rutland Virtual School has been a fantastic advocate for us as foster carers, supporting children and young adults in placement. They've provided support with us and the children. They fight their corner in every single meeting. They assist with any problems liaise with teachers and schools and are real strong advocates for our child. Each school that they've looked at virtually and gone to, to visit, they've, they've been very open and honest to how they see the school be best place for our child in placement. They attend every PEP, they speak highly of the child and ultimately want the best for them. Can you tell me about the support that you've received over the years from the virtual school and, the, and how they've helped you? 
So I've had support with like finding school placements and stuff, like not being able to go into mainstream. So like helped with finding alternate provisions and like helping and supporting with that and all my lab meetings and all our educational meetings and stuff. Been really good. Like always attending, always putting across what they think is best and all of that. In your role as a home manager, can you tell me what support you receive from the virtual school and how the virtual school helps young people in your care? The virtual school have been amazing. As a new manager, and the virtual school really supported me in advocating for the young people that I look after. So it was a case of making sure that the placement was right, they were receiving the right support, sharing EHCP with the school and making sure that everybody had read the document. And it was just a case of working together to advocate for the young people. We've had the same virtual school point of contact for the entire time that I've been here. So it was just nice that that person knew the young person, could advocate for them fully, ensuring that their views, wishes and feelings were being adhered to where possible and also forward planning, just the working together to ensure we had the same vision for the young person going forward and just general check-ins and making sure that rewards were given, encouragement was given and supporting us where we needed it. You ask, unaccompanied asylum-seeking children or children and young people from overseas. 30% approximately of our children in care cohort under the umbrella of Rutland County Council are from overseas. These young people are identified as UASC, unaccompanied asylum-seeking children. They have travelled from destinations such as Syria, Sudan, Iraq, Ethiopia and further afield. They arrive at Rutland County Council via two methods. One is via the National Transfer Scheme, where all local authorities take their percentage of unaccompanied asylum-seeking children, and they also arrive at the door of the local authority by spontaneous arrival. So those that maybe have been picked up on motorways or that have been abandoned out of back of lorries, at service stations, etc. Rutland County Council accommodate these children on a Section 20 and the virtual school support this cohort of children exactly the same as any other child in care. So our role here is to ensure that the children from overseas are, get their entitlement in relation to education and have a good quality education. Rutland County Council Virtual School pride themselves on the excellent support that we provide to our US children. This was recognised in a recent Ofsted focus visit where they identified the support that we provide to our children from overseas is second to none. Our role here is to champion for their education, entitlement and rights. Can you tell me what Leicester City Football Club in the community is and uh, some of its charitable aims? So Leicester City in the community is the charitable arm of Leicester City Football Club and our core purpose is to use the brand of LCFC to engage our local communities through our core values of engage, inspire, empower, through respect, togetherness and pride. We have two core themes which are community and education and work with a range of people from ages 5 to 95 in schools and community settings. Can you provide detail in relation to Foster the Future and um, what that offers to Rutland Virtual School? So the Foster the Future programme supports care experienced young people and gives them access to mentoring with one of our Inspire mentors and also provides a range of enrichment opportunities and allows them to have experiences that they may, may not have experienced in the past. Leicester City in the community and Rutland Virtual School have a really strong partnership that has mutual benefit. 
Less Sitting Communities Foster the Future programme provides additional capacity to Rutland Virtual School with our mentor mentors going in to support care experienced young people. And alongside that, we attend PET meetings to ensure that all professionals are working together and provide a range of enrichment opportunities to care experienced children who may have not had these opportunities in the past. Our staff team at Less Sit in the Community really benefit from the partnership as um, there are lots of training opportunities that Rutland Virtual School provide, including trauma-informed practice and being able to attend lots of guest speaker events. So can you tell us about the partnership between Leicester City Football Club in the community and Rutland Virtual School and, and describe to me some of the activities uh, that are involved in the partnership? So the partnership with Rutland Virtual School I think is really important because I think we are quite a strong voice for the young people. We have that friendly face that can go in and help them and support them with something that sometimes it's hard to talk to professionals about. So we go in, we'll just sort of break the ice a little bit, get to know them, like build up a good relationship and go and help them with the confidence, their resilience, sort of like maybe an improvement in behaviour at school or just sort of they need someone to open up to. They've got so many fantastic opportunities, so some of our young people have been on residentials, they've walked out onto the pitch at Wembley carrying all sorts of flags, we've been to the Outdoor Pursuit Centre, rock climbing, skateboarding, snowboarding. The Mighty Creatives are a children and young people's charity. We're based in Leicester, but we work all across the country, providing creative youth services for children and young people who experience disadvantage. A big part of our work is our creative mentoring programme and our youth voice consultancy programme. Our creative mentoring programme provides one-to-one -one creative support for care experienced children and young people where they work with a creative mentor who's an artist or a creative practitioner over a period of time. And our youth voice consultancy programmes support services to capture the voices of children and young people and their experiences of the support they provide. The reason we do what we do at the Mighty Creatives is to provide creative experiences to children and young people because we know that many of us will have experiences inspired by family members. So maybe going to a museum with a parent or carer or going to watch a music show with a grandparent and we know that some care experienced children and young people might not have those experiences and that's why we exist. We do this through working with Virtual School and we have a really strong two-way partnership with Whitland County Council's Virtual School where not only do we support young people through creative mentoring and youth voice consultancy work but also Whitland County Council support us and our staff in learning the best practice around working with care experienced young people and I think a big part of our partnership is looking broader than that and looking at where we can work with additional partners and funders to help bolster that work. Much of the help and support we provide requires multi-agency working. For example, we will support our SEND colleagues with the finding of a school place for children with an EHCP or supporting a school in an EHCP application process. A key part of our work at Rutland Virtual School is to provide bespoke and meaningful training for all professionals working with our children and young people. This can range from teachers, social workers and other colleagues in children's social care to foster carers. Themes of our training we deliver include trauma-informed practice, attachment awareness, restorative practice, theraplay techniques and emotional regulation. We use expert staff within the virtual school or renowned guest speakers to deliver these sessions online and face-to-face. -face. We hold our annual conference in March, which also allows professionals to network and share good practice. We hold termly designated teacher networks for our colleagues in education settings, working directly with our care experienced children and young people. SIN Child in Need CP Child Protection Plan EHCP Education Health and Care Plan CSC Children's Social Care DT Designated Teacher DSL Designated Safeguard in Lead SENCO Special Educational Needs Coordinator 
CLA. This stands for Children Looked After. In Rutland, we are aware of the impact that language can have on people, so we prefer this acronym compared to LAC, which stands for Looked After Children. This is sometimes used to describe children and young people.